So an important tool that Gowan and I have used over the past year has been something called the art of perception. And the art of perception is a mindset, a way of looking at things, not just for what they are, but for what they can be. It's seeing possibilities and not limitations. And our project started with a simple crown. In its physical form, a crown is simply a piece of colored wax. But with the art of perception, we were able to see what else this crown could become. And with that came the Color My World project. And the Color My World project is based off of the idea of abandoning a culture of waste. And what we do is we recycle crayons that would otherwise be thrown out from family-style restaurants, and we redistribute them to underfunded schools and early childhood care centers that cannot afford them. Um, and this whole process has allowed us to take a waste and redistribute it and repurpose it uh, for the benefit of somebody that cannot afford it. Now, the world is too small to not think. The Color My World project is not... Okay, here we go, here we go. <laughs> there are too many possibilities out there and too many problems for us to stand back and sit down and not really do anything. Um, and with this quote, the world is too small to not think big, think of the different problems in our community and our society as opportunities and possibilities for us to make a change, not merely um, a negative. So when, when confronting a problem, um, think of the basics of what is the problem, what do you want to change in the world, why do you want to change it, and how do you plan to do it. In this case, the what is the problem that you're looking to change. The why is the passion that you'll use to change it, and the how is the plan. Once you have this idea, if you have something that you care about in your community and your society, go with that. If you don't, think about something that bothers you every day, something that persists that shouldn't continue. Why hasn't it changed? Where is it happening and who is affected? So for us, it was talking to restaurant proprietors and servers, understanding that they're throwing out hundreds of crayons every single day just because of a touch table policy which means that anything that touches a table has to be thrown out after the meal, regardless of, its, regardless of whether it's been used. And this waste is something that we want to confront. So that waste is the why. The where, after conducting further research, is finding out that thousands of restaurants across the United States are, adopt the same policy and are throwing out hundreds of crayons as well. That's the where. And the potential to replace these crayons that are sitting in landfills give them to people that could use them and don't have the opportunity to afford them, that's the who is affected. Once you have this idea, jumping into the process is important. Have this issue, but start to brainstorm doable ideas. You have really nothing to lose, and the whole process is about learning. Create your mission. Use this mission to guide you and guide your peers. Let them know what you're doing and why you're doing it that's as important to get them involved and to get them passionate. Design your approach. Think of doable ideas and ways to handle this issue. Use creative mindset. And lastly, outline your goals. Create a six month to 12 month plan. And as you use this plan, it'll help guide you and take off the stress. But also, you can look back and celebrate your accomplishments and see how far you've come from the very beginning. This whole process is new and just jump into it really have nothing to lose in all to gain.
is that you have to keep the growth of the organization manageable. And that you have to make sure that you can fulfill all the responsibilities that your organization requires, and that you don't overextend any of the resources that you have in the organization. Uh, so what's really essential, one of the key points uh, about social entrepreneurship is that <coughs> you should never hesitate to start a venture just because, because you think your idea does not matter. Your idea always matters. It's simply, you simply have to take your idea and mold it into something that is more feasible or something that is closer to your mission, to your goals, and then from there proceed. I mean, for us, we started with the idea of repurposing crowns, and we thought, can crowns really make a difference? I mean, they are literally just crowns. But we have found over the process of the last year of running our organization that it's really just a matter of taking the idea that you have and fitting it into the situation that you're working with it. And what you really have to do is start with the doing part of the organization once you have the initial concept. Because more ideas will follow after that and the organization will really take on a life of its own. And in this initial period when you're getting all the wheels moving uh, of the organization, it's really important to experiment and to play around with your ideas and see what works and what doesn't. And because there's no time constraint on what you're doing. All the goals that you have are set by yourself. And therefore, you can take the time if you hit a roadblock or come up against an obstacle. You can take the time and stop and think about it and figure out a solution to the problem you're facing and then take your mission and your goals on a new path that goes around that obstacle. And really, when you're facing obstacles like this, and they'll come up when, when you're running an organization. You face many of them like restaurants who are or unwilling to participate or who are unreliable. And you've overcome these because you really have to have a sense of confidence and tenacity. The confidence to know that you will be able to think around any sort of obstacle that comes towards you. And you're always able to find a new idea that will take you in a new direction, maybe even a better one. And then the tenacity is just the determination to get back up whenever you're confronted with a problem that might knock you down. So with this idea of social entrepreneur, we believe that there are key aspects um, that really embody a social entrepreneur. And the first of that is open-mindedness. And that open-mindedness is really essential because social entrepreneurs look at the community this relates back to the art of perception. You look at the community uh, in new ways and try to look at problems in society in new angles, in new directions. And then the social entrepreneur has to be creative as well because once you have looked at society and community in different ways, you have to be able to look at those problems and come up with creative solutions to them. And social entrepreneurs also embrace change, and that's one part because social entrepreneurs are able to create change. But the second part is also the type of change that you have to adapt and rework what you're doing as a social entrepreneur in any situation. You have to be able to evolve with the circumstances that you're working with. And then another really crucial point is that the social entrepreneur has to be able to step outside of his or her comfort zone because that comfort zone and that boundary really the only boundary that is in between the now and the possible. And that boundary is what inhibits so many people from bringing their ideas into fruition. And so that being able to move outside the comfort zone and make, have ideas and make them possible and have, have the most impact is really essential. And then probably the most important, we think, is the passion. And the passion is something that you have to have in order for your mission to be successful because if you don't believe in what you're doing, who will? And so you really have to have yourself invested in that. So with all of this, as a social entrepreneur, what does that mean? Hold on, it's definitely, what does that mean for a social entrepreneur's place within the community? And we believe that in essence, uh, an activist is a an active visionary in the community. And the, the more people who take an active stake in their community, the better. Because it's really up to you whether 
you want to be a passive member of the community or an active one. And in that sense, we see social activism and social responsibility as, and that's all of this, and help us, as really the core of the foundation for society going forward in the future and for our planet.